Whenever a game comes out that features a sexy female lead, journalists freak out saying, oh, gaming isn't moving forward and only men like their designs. And now that Bayonetta 3 has released, even though it's already faced massive controversy because of Helena Taylor, journals are trashing it for appealing to the male gaze. I have a bunch of things to show off, but before we get into the topic at hand, if you enjoy the content that I create, please make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell. Follow me on social media like Twitter or mine so that you can see when my content is posted. And of course, if you do really enjoy the videos and the live streams that I create, please consider becoming a Dark Titan via Patreon for just a dollar a month or support the channel via YouTube members memberships. All of the links are in the description, and of course, I do really appreciate all of the support. So I wanted to start with this Bounding Into Comics article that says Bayonetta 3 discourse over the protagonist's sexy appearance exposes just how insecure video game journalists truly are. I honestly figured that there was going to be some kind of new controversy surrounding this game because, of course, their sexy characters in it. Whenever a game releases and a female character is even slightly attractive, game journalists find some way to spin it as like a bad thing. So, from the numerous development hells to the currently ongoing drama involving its voice actresses, Bayonetta 3 has had, to say the least, a tumultuous development cycle. It says it is perhaps the current discourse surrounding the sexualized appearance of the game's lead, which has proven the most important. Thanks to the latest cycle of outrage, players have been provided with perhaps the most staunch confirmation yet that video game journalists don't actually care about the medium they cover, but are rather only interested in seeking external validation for their own personal existence. I have said this so many times, but I have no reason to like journalists or trust journalists. At this point, they are very out of touch and they are more worried about shoving their own personal political opinions into articles and into pieces and they don't actually care about the medium and I have said this a hundred times over. Ever since the first Bayonetta hit the PS3 and Xbox 360 in 2009, the sexy features of the Umbral Witch's design, her skin-tight costume, large chest, long legs, and even her overtly campy fighting style has been regularly touted by critical race and gender theorists as evidence that both the video game industry, particularly Japan's, and the game's fans were nothing but disgusting sexists. This is nothing new, okay? This round of outrage from journalists is just kind of what they always do whenever a half-decent looking female is put into a video game. They say, oh, you're all ists if you like her design. This was only designed for men. I mean, it's the same shit, different day these ideologues became so attached to this disingenuous narrative that even once it became widespread knowledge that not only was Bayonetta's character extremely popular among women, but also that she was designed by a woman, they attempted to pivot their argument. This is one reason why I absolutely love the fact that Bayonetta is so popular, because it does break down these journalists' narrative, and they actually have to think a little bit to make an argument surrounding this character simply because, yes, she was created by a woman and is extremely popular with women. It says instead of being created purely to uh, titillate the male gaze, they now have positioned Bayonetta as a tragic example of the patriarchy at work and argue that no matter what empowerment female fans may identify with in her character, it was ultimately all undercut and made null and void by the sexist attitudes of its male audience. As a female, I find strength in a lot of female characters, and I don't care if anyone else likes those characters or if it's just me that gets that experience out of playing the characters, seeing their stories progress and unravel. I just enjoy the content that I want to enjoy, and I don't need a journalist to tell me I can or can't enjoy something. That is ridiculous, which of course is what they want. They ultimately want people to not be able to think for themselves and go, oh, what is Kotaku saying about 
about this. I think that I might be outraged. Oh, what is Polygon saying about this? I might be outraged. And of course, these journalists say you should be mad at these characters, and they hope that more people will follow along. But Unfortunately for them, a lot of people don't. Uh, we do see a lot of these types of hit pieces release against games and characters that ultimately just kind of exist so that they can get hate clicks or else, you know, they're going to lose their jobs and their platform is going to die. So it says, hilariously, all this need for their own choices to be supported has led many of the usual suspects and groups to find themselves spouting diametrically opposing viewpoints, with some even outright lying about the history of Bayonetta discourse in order to keep themselves in the favor of their audience. Wow, a video game journalist lying so that they can get more clicks? Who could have seen that one coming? So, of course, a Kotaku staff writer, after years of sites like her former employer browbeating people with their sexism accusations towards the heroine, attempted to argue, of all the games to say doesn't need to pander to the alphabet people, Bayonetta, what exactly about Bayonetta signals that it's for straight people, she further questioned. Somebody said, we had years where Bayonetta was one of the prime examples of being bad because it was pandering to the male gaze. Much of Anita's arguments were using it as examples. And then they said, yeah, well, that criticism and lineup of argumentation was and still are stupid. So now they're arguing that Bayonetta is an LGBT icon and that Bayonetta isn't even for straight people. Again, even though for years they were saying that it really only pandered to straight people. They went on to say, who is the gazer in Bayonetta? I genuinely have no idea. I don't know who looks at a woman's body in the way that the camera observes Bayonetta other than queer people. Anyone who finds a female character in a video game attractive, is it really that serious? Okay, I can see men in video games, women in video games, and appreciate the way that they look, appreciate the way that they're designed. Does that mean everybody on the face of planet Earth who looks at a video game character and goes, wow, they look good is queer? No, you can still appreciate this form of art and not go, wow, does this change who I am? Does this represent who I am? You can just look at a character and go, wow, they look nice. It's just as simple as that. Uh, they also went on to say, there's a huge reason why these games attracted a big queer audience, and that's great if you're a queer individual and you are playing these games, that's awesome, but that doesn't mean that everybody that plays them is that way. Notably, though, in 2015, Bayonetta's wardrobe style guide written for Pace Magazine, Jackson herself admitted that she tends to find the way the camera treats Bayonetta's body is a little gross, so this same exact person has shit on Bayonetta before. Unsurprisingly, the editor-in-chief of Vice's Waypoint Technology news outlet, who once fetishized the concept of internet hoardy simply because he could finally attribute it to queer women instead of straight men, was quick to voice support for Jackson's analysis. So as you can see, while these individuals are trying to come up with some kind of new argument because, of course, they know the calling everyone sexist argument isn't really working anymore, there are still some individuals who are trying to push that, like the uh, Polygon deputy editor said, to be honest, it makes perfect sense if straight men are largely giving Bayonetta 3 great scores, the game is made explicitly for them. Sorry if this tweet sounds mean or whatever, but it's simply the facts of the matter as presented clearly by the game itself. Now, I actually kind of disagree with that. You could maybe say that Bayonetta 1 and Bayonetta 2 were clearly men to attract people with the sexy character designs. And yes, Bayonetta 3 does still have some sexy character designs, but one of the main characters, Viola, is nothing but eye candy. And you play as her in multiple chapters. I hate her. She is annoying. She looks like an SJW. It just shows how westernized they tried to make Bayonetta 3 and how they tried to attract a different audience with this character. And of course, these individuals are praising this character. Um, but I would say that Bayonetta 3 isn't as eye candy as 1 or 2.
These people are just desperate to get clicks, even if they're hate clicks, and they are willing to bury their reputations as long as they are making money at the end of the day. And of course, they're pushing these same tired arguments over and over and over. I knew that there was going to be articles like this surrounding Bayonetta 3, and I'm sure we're going to see a lot by the time... You know, the game is dying down and a lot of the initial hype is kind of settling um, because, of course, the game only came out a couple of days ago. A lot of people are buying it, playing it, talking about it on social media. I'm sure we're going to see a lot of articles like that uh, release in the next few weeks, but... As you can see, all of these journalists are kind of freaking out over Bayonetta, saying that, oh, of course it's still made for, you know, only men, it's only eye candy, just exposing how insecure they truly are. But that's all that I really had to discuss in this video. Let everyone know your thoughts in the comment section down below. If you enjoyed it, please make sure to give it a like, share it, and subscribe to the channel. And of course, if you didn't, make sure to give it a dislike. I appreciate your support either way, but I will talk to you all again in the next video really soon.